Welcome back. I think some news dropped last night. I probably look like ass. I went to a Christmas party last night, a little hungover. Anyways, to the news that broke last night. The worst kept secret in college football finally came out. And that's Kendall Bryles is leaving Houston to become FSU's next offensive coordinator. Now, if you paid attention to social media or any of the seminal websites or podcasts, you knew this weeks ago, at least one or two weeks ago, that Bryles would be the offensive coordinator and that the announcement of it wouldn't occur till after early signing period. Why? Because Houston's bowl game was after early signing period and he wanted to finish that shit out before he pieced the fuck out. Okay, so this nonsense I've seen about Sam Howell and he didn't come here because there's not even an offensive coordinator in place. FSU's so incompetent. No, motherfucker. If I and any swinging dick on social media knew that he was coming after early signing period and after Houston's bowl game, then Sam Howell and other key recruits certainly fucking knew. I mean, come on. You really think they didn't know? Get out of here. That's nonsense. So last night it dropped. He's leaving, likely to come FSU offensive coordinator. FSU hasn't announced the hire yet. They'll likely do it in a news dump tomorrow, right before the holidays. Uh, which, if you listen to the Nolcast, statistically, the ho- Christmas Eve and Christmas that time of year is just is just down for for media content. Um, that said, let's get into the elephant in the room. Okay. Yes, Bryles was working under his father at Baylor when the worst rape cover-up in NCAA history occurred. Now, I don't know his involvement, whether or how you know, whether how much he had to do with it, but I am not naive enough to think that he did not know what was going on. Like, regardless if he played no part, I know someone put a stupid quote about there uh, about him saying that Bryles asked a player if he liked white women or black women. That's nothing new. Hello? FSU's been using FAMU girls for how long? Um, But that's neither here nor there. The point is, I'm sure he knew something that was going on. How much involvement did he have in it? I don't know. That quote means virtually nothing to me because almost every major program across the country uses girls to recruit kids. And if you don't think so, you're naive. Um, But yeah, that FSU will take a big PR hit. Now, when he left... Baylor after the 2016 season, basically after the shit hit the fan. I think he went to FAU. Nobody cared. Nationally, no one cared. Then he went to Houston. No one nationally cared. But now he's at Florida State. Whatever involvement he may or may not have been in, stories are going to come out now. Florida State moves the fucking needle when it comes to this shit. No one gave a fuck. Rival fans of FSU, specifically gave a fuck when he went to FAU or Houston. Now, that means nothing now, but just a a side note there. Um, But you can believe stories will fucking come out the woodworks now, whatever they may be. Okay, so so they're going to take the PR hit there, and it's fine. And there's some fans I've already seen on social media that are like, this hire means I won't be rooting for FSU football until he's gone, because these are my principles and yada, yada, yada. And I can understand that. I can understand that. To each his own. Myself, there's not a single hire FSU could make for me to not root for them boys on the field. Not one. I'm not, after 25 years of fandom, I'm not just going to stop rooting for them because an offensive coordinator hire. I can't do it. I just can't. I understand some that may. That totally makes sense. uh, From that perspective. But I'll still be rooting for the Seminoles every Saturday like that's not going to change and what's amazing to me and this will this will start soon is that um, I made a joke on Twitter to a Florida fan who was trying to you know come up with a funny joke about women and FSU and blah 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 I was like first of all everyone hates us anyway so zero fucks given secondly I put something like Florida man parentheses Gators fan Stands on moral high ground. Claims 2005 to 2010 never happened. My fucking God. The shit show that occurred between those years when Urban Meyer, you know, possibly the worst scumbag head coach in the history of college football, did 
on those Florida sidelines. Like, get the fuck out of here. Now, now you care about morals and shit. Now you do. You're going to take those two titles away? Helped cover up a fucking murder attempt. Hernandez drive-by. All kinds of other shit. A player, Texas girlfriend, is going to kill them. Uh, you know, choking a coach. Uh, fucking 41 arrests, but just eight... Sus- I'd go on and on and on. There needs to be a 30 for 30 on Urban Meyer's Florida tenure. When they said the inmates were running the asylum, that's not a fucking exaggeration. So any fuck dick gator that wants to get on here and stand on their moral high ground about this hire, get the fuck out of here. You didn't care about Bryles before today. You gave zero fucks. Okay. Same with Miami. We all know their fucking shady history. So get the fuck out. Both of y'all. Stupid. Um, From a football perspective, let's move on from the PR hit. That's gonna, you know, it's gonna happen. Uh, From a football perspective. And I'm stopped now. It's a home run hire. He's a massive upgrade over Walt Bell that just left. Uh, The previous four years, he's led three top ten offenses. Yeah, three top ten offenses at three different schools, uh, according to the S&P rankings, which are like contextual stats. Um, The lone exception was the 2016 shit show when everyone had transferred. Uh, The offense he runs, as the Nolcast said, is very similar to what FSU tried to run last year, but no O-line and no athletic QB. We saw the shit show. So there's not going to be a whole lot of nuances and like lingo that the players will have to learn. Okay. But the guy comes from a great pedigree of offensive minds and the proof is in the pudding with three top 10 offenses and at three different schools the last four years. So massive upgrade over bell. And it's reported just this morning that he's likely to bring his offensive line coach Clements in with him. That is probably a huge upgrade over Fry as well. We all saw what Fry did. We know he inherited a mess, but you even saw the last couple games of the season. Still, you would just see poor technique. You could deal with them getting out physical, so to speak, but there was still ass technique you, you saw at the end of the year. Never mind the false starts and yada, yada, yada. Uh, and of course, the recruiting trail. Sorry, I can't dismiss that. He basically completely whiffed on the recruiting trail. I know as an offensive line coach, you don't recruit only offensive linemen, but let's look at the offensive line class as it stands. There's some nice underrated three stars, but there's only one blue chip. And at present, FSU has to scramble the JUCO ranks and plan C's for high school kids. So, and he whiffed on Putnam, which is absolutely inexcusable. I get Clemson's a better program right now, but you supposedly had a great relationship and you dropped the ball. So, he, so I don't know if he stays on. There's talks that Fry could stay on and just work under Clements. Maybe Fry does what he did at um, Michigan, which I think was just coach tackles or in tight ends or something. So who knows about that fallout? But from a football's perspective, Bryles and Clements are huge upgrades. Absolutely huge. So that at least brings a little excitement because th- this offseason has been mostly about disappointments. The class is kind of eh. It's top 15, which I guess given the season, I guess you should be happy with that, but that's not the type of classes that'll lead you back to national titles and college football playoff appearances and conference games and conference championship games and stuff like that. So going into next year, just win, baby. That's it. Don't even have to go like 10 and two or 11. Win eight games, nine games. I guarantee next year's class, recruiting class 2020 will be firmly in the top 10 because they were in on a ton of kids this class even following the shit show of a season but they couldn't close and a lot of that had to do with I'm sure the kids were like yeah I don't want to join that fucking clown show and that's understandable that wasn't just about wins and losses that was also about how the product looked they looked incompetent at times we're not going to rejudge the season there was criticisms to the staff hopefully these two hires help turn some of that around going into next year. The schedule's easier, blah, 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 blah. I'll go into next year later on. But Kendall Bryles, your new offensive coordinator at FSU, from a football standpoint, it's a home run hire. Clements is a nice little pickup as well. So we got about a month and a half till signing day in February. Uh, hopefully I can pick up a few more kids, especially on that offensive line. But we'll see how it plays out. This offseason's been ridiculous so far. All right, till next time, I'm out.